It looks like one side of a duck, and grid operators call it the duck curve. If you trace the net daily demand for energy in California, that's demand minus energy supply, it starts at midnight with the tail. The belly of the duck comes at midday when solar energy production is at its peak. But then demand zooms up to form the head of the duck in the early evening when demand for energy is high and the sun is setting. So in the belly of the day, basically from, you know, that uh, early afternoon, even late morning, it was just that use that uh, noon to, you know, noon to 3 p.m. is kind of that the deepest part of the belly, meaning where our net load is at its lowest because of our uh, output from our renewable resources. Brian Murray is director of real-time operations for Cal ISO, the state's electrical grid, and he says that duck curve represents the challenge of meeting demand in a world of renewable energy, which is variable and can't be produced by just throwing a switch. When he talks about renewables, he mostly means solar power, which provides most of California's electricity during daytime and summer. He says California's state-controlled renewable energy has a total of 31,000 megawatts of capacity. Solar energy makes up about two-thirds of that. Wind power is the second largest contributor. And as technology and construction move ahead, that will surely change. Offshore wind is going to become... You know, that's in the in the planning horizon for us. And then there are the battery farms. Murray calls the recent growth in that energy source exponential. The batteries has been a, a major player for us in terms of the, their flexibility, right? It's not like a, a steam plant that needs 10 hours to turn on. You know, batteries are essentially always on. They, they can be discharging and providing energy to the grid, or they can be consuming energy while they're charging. So they're they're beneficial on, in multiple areas of, of the duck curve. Flexibility is the key to running a modern energy supply operation that's moving to renewables. When one source is not producing, you have to switch to another. When you have more energy production than you can use, you export it to another state or use it to charge the battery farms. And flexibility in demand, called energy load, is also important. In a low-slung building just below the trolley tracks at UC San Diego, engineering researchers show us two rooms filled with computers, breakers, and nodes. The nodes are small boxes that communicate with electrical devices on campus. The new building is the hub of an energy testbed that will study a big chunk of the campus to learn how devices can be turned off and on to make the most of energy supply. Professor Jan Kleisel is principal investigator for what they call DER Connect. Right, you have water heaters, you have electric vehicles, you have air conditioning systems, you have uh, something as small as a printer that's, that's not being used. Um, so we're looking at thousands of these devices that are spread throughout the campus and uh, we pick those that are ready to, to reduce load or increase load and then we communicate with them and make them uh, run faster or slower depending on what we need. Testbed project manager Keaton Chia says the energy demand side is constantly in flux. So how do we manage the coordination? How do we make uh, these distributed devices smart enough to actually talk back and communicate essential information back to each other so that we can uh, maintain that balance between generation and load across the whole grid. One example of a smart device is a building sensor that can tell the grid there's nobody on the floor of an office building. The building can be programmed to turn off the lights and suspend air circulation to that floor. The UCSD testbed, like the California grid, also has batteries that can store energy and, if you want, generate energy to simulate, let's say, a wind power station. Because of that variability, we need to look for flexibility and variation on the load side as well. Uh, And that way, again, we can work together, customer and generator provider, to maintain that balance. The primary goal at UCSD is to create a set of algorithms to program the grid to supply power where demand actually exists. The political force that's driving changes to California's electrical grid are state laws that demand greater use of renewable energy. Murray with CalISO says the state's power supply has to be 60 percent renewable by 2030 and 100 percent by 2045. Can we meet those goals? Murray says we can. We've got statistics that show we've got a number of days where we've already produced, you know, 100 percent of our load by renewables. So to say, can we achieve 
60 percent by 2030 uh, absolutely we're 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 pretty much we're pretty close to that already nuclear energy is also clean energy since it doesn't emit greenhouse gases but murray says nuclear's production is very inflexible so you cannot easily reduce it or shut it off so with the growth we're seeing in other clean energies he doesn't think nuclear will be needed in california's future thomas fudge kpbs news